So I have no clue how the DNC convention is going to play out. I, at this point, I have an idea about what me, I'm going to speak only from, for hard lens media. Cause I know a lot of people in independent media, um, you know, are going to be showing up here. Uh, you know, you got the homeless left, by the way, everybody, please still keep on helping him out and retweeting out his work. I know right now he's been co-hosting with pasta, which is great. I want to see more of that, make it happen. Um, but also for the fact of number two, this is, this is, this is also important too. um, that with this convention that's going to be coming here, um, there's been a lot of concern about whether or not it's going to be, you know, a full on convention because half of it could very well be just all online. So I want to read this tweet here from Michael Tracy that is uh, raising some red flags in regards to what's going to happen here. Now, Hard Lens Media, we're going to cover it. I know a lot of people in independent media have reached out to us to collaborate, and I'm more than happy to collaborate with them too. But Here's what could probably be happening because the DNC wants to stop and halt any attempts to disrupt the event. The DNC has officially moved to nominate Biden before the August convention through an all virtual roll call vote. Historically, the entire purpose of national convention has been to nominate a party's president and vice presidential candidates, but that's apparently been abolished. This article falsely asserts that the move is necessary because of an Ohio law that would have quali- that, re- that would have required Biden to be nominated by uh, August 7th to appear on the state ballot. But that law was revised on June 2nd and Biden can appear on the ballot as normal. Still, they're using that bogus excuse to do a virtual nomination procedure, which will eliminate the inconvenience of delegates potentially objecting to Biden on the convention floor. At least 32 uncommitted delegates have already been elected in various states, Democrat, uh, states, Democratic primaries. Apologies for that. So the move is clearly designed to stamp out unwelcome exhibitions of dissension from pro-Palestinian delegates. So that's what's happening here. That's what we're witnessing. And on top of that, I also want to pull up this article here from Fox News. I know it's Fox News, but bear with me. Chicago getting window dressing treatment for Democratic National Convention, says former chief. So Chicago will soon be in the national spotlight. We're always in the national spotlight. When it hosts the Democratic National Convention in August, but primarily in the glitzed up area, areas leaders want to be seen in. The city is facing a few complications. Its stubborn problem with violence, the wild card of left wing anti-Israeli agitators, worn down infrastructure and the specter of infamous clashes when Chicago hosted a DNC way back in 1968. Because uh, the DNC doesn't want that click, copy, paste of what happened in 1968. And as for Chicago's infrastructure, uh, look, yeah, it's it's pretty much worn down. Our train systems are a mess. Our public transportation is a mess. Our politicians are a mess. And there's a lot of activists and organizers who are going to be forming up, booting up and suiting up, calling out the Democratic establishment. Street and walkway upgrades are already underway. This is the fastest I've ever seen anything get updated, but it's all just window dressing here at this point. And according to law enforcement source, the plan is to isolate the convention area from the rest of the city entirely with access only for the media, law enforcement, and DNC designees. So I'm willing to bet that there's a whole list of people that will and will not be allowed to be at the DNC convention. There's going to be a whole list of who is allowed to step foot in there. Now, hard lens media, we're going to do everything in our power. And I'm pretty sure all of our colleagues in independent media as well are going to do everything in their power to cover the event, to cover, you know, what is bound to be somewhat a historical event here in this city. But continue on. We are basically uh, we are we are going to basically never see a protester or writers, period. The source said the convention sites are completely cordoned off. There will be nobody that is not authorized. Authorities are imposing strict measures on people who live and work inside the secure zone as well, including vehicle checks, uh, because that's going to happen. The city already has a 10 p.m. use curfew for the summer, and some leaders are looking to move the start time to 8 p.m. Yeah, because everyone follows curfew. They want to portray an image of a calm of peace and orderly convention says said gene roy the chicago police department's former chief of detectives and public safety consulate they obviously do not want any negative images whether it's protesters or confrontations with police to get out so the people that are playing this are doing their best to avoid that because heaven forbid that the democrats are actually called out for their own hypocrisy 
The two sites uh, chosen for the DNC, uh, United Center and McCormick Place Convention Center, will become highly secured bubbles, he told Fox News Digital. The city's problems with violence and rowdy use will be tucked away and out of view. Knowing my city, that's not going to be tucked away. You can't tuck it away. You can't hide it. It's, it's not going bye-bye. It's staying exactly where it's at. The DNC and all the political types, they are going to parachute in or helicopter in. They're not going to be affected by this. Days ago, we had a terrible tragedy. A seven-year-old playing outside in front of his house. Shot was an AK-47. That's terrible. He blamed progressive bail reform, selective prosecutions, lenient punishments, and a continued struggle for its for the continued struggles with violence. While murders have declined two years in a row after rising in 2020 and 2021, violent crime as a whole, led by soaring robberies, has climbed in the Windy, Windy City. Police statistics show yearly yearly car thefts nearly tripled between 2020 and 2023 from 9,910 to 29,287. Brandon Johnson, what are you doing? Still crews are uh, still crews at work improving the roadways in and out of the convention areas and replacing rusted handrails as city leaders continue their preparations for the event, which could see protests from right wing critics of the Democratic Party and also far left anti Israeli extremists who have been critical of the Biden administration and demonstrations across the country. About a month ago, they came out and replaced all the guardrails. What a coincidence, Roy said. It's window dressing. Democratic leaders from the White House down to the mayor's office are hoping to minimize disruptions and avoid bad optics. Well, this is how you get bad optics. All right. You're blocking out any form of criticism. You're forming up that shield wall. I want to take this uh, article down here. I want to say that we'll be able to uh, do as much interviews as possible. But chances are, if there's going to be this much of a hands-on approach, there's going to be just some areas in which anybody in the media, and that goes for everybody in the media, will be incapable of getting into. And I, myself, decided to reach out to some local news outlets and other people involved in media here in Chicago. And those of, of a higher reputation or those who have been involved in previous conventions in the past have also been railroaded and blocked from covering the convention. They want a controlled image, a controlled narrative. I've never seen anything like this before. So if not only independent media is being dismissed, but other media sources too, the Democrats are panicking. They're scared. They're scared of the people. They're scared of somebody protesting Biden. They're scared of anybody making this event look bad. They're frightened because they're not serious about this convention. They're not serious about the fact of following through with their promises. The Democrats are afraid of people. They're afraid of voters. They're afraid of criticism. They're afraid of their own shadow. It's nothing but fear. And that's all what the Democrats have to offer. Nothing but fear. But don't worry. Don't worry. We, we can at least still get a word salad here and there. We can still at least get, you know, the idea of, Oh, maybe, 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 maybe this time around, the Democrats have a plan. But they don't. They're never going to have a plan for us. They only want us to shut up and vote for them and use fear tactics. Here's an example of a liar right here. AOC, take the floor. Marks the two-year anniversary of the catastrophic Dobbs decision. Two years since six conservative justices toppled Roe v. Wade, since our right to choose was taken from us, and pregnant women and people across the country have had their lives at risk. It don't you love the music in the background trying to make this look all serious? Don't, don't, don't you like it, the fact that here's what AOC is not telling you about what happens Roe v. Wade, and that is the Democrats had at one point a supermajority, but Barack Obama said it wasn't politically expedient? Or the fact that the Democrats really could have actually pushed through with having the, the new Supreme Court justices if actually Obama really followed through with it? He, we, hey, liberals, you wouldn't be in this situation if you didn't have the hubris of thinking that Hill Dog was going to win in 2016. Hey, wouldn't it have been a sight to see if actually Obama told – uh good old Ruth Bader Ginsburg to step down. But no, they didn't because there was nothing but a whole bunch of egomaniacs doing virtual signaling. Roe v. Wade didn't die because of Trump. Roe v. Wade died because of the Democrats in action. It's been 
And by the way, there are going to be, you know, uh, women's right to choose, you know, uh, uh, pro, pro choice uh, protesters at the DNC convention as well. In two years since our freedom over our bodies was seized by the most corrupt Supreme Court in American history. And that court itself was appointed by the most corrupt president in American history, Donald Trump. Because it's Trump. It was all Trump's fault. And it is precisely because of Donald Trump and his corrupt court that women and girls and pregnant people have less rights today in 2024 than our parents and grandparents did. And Okay, now what she's doing here is causing more fear. And this is a, a great w example about why, why anybody that's protesting the DNC should redouble and triple their efforts to do everything they can to show the world that they are upset and being critical of the Democrats. It's not only just going to be, you know, uh, pro-Palestine protesters being there, but there's going to be a lot of protest groups and activists there protesting the Democrats because the Democrats never followed through with their promises. You know, this whole thing, oh, there was nothing they could do to codify Roe v. Wade. Yes, there was. There was a lot that you could have done. There's a lot that Biden could have done. But hey, AOC, you think Nancy cares about a woman's right to choose? No. You think Dianne Feinstein, when she was still alive, cared about a woman's right to choose? No. No, none of the women in the Democratic Party care. They would have fought hard for it, but it just wasn't politically expedient. And I have a message for this conservative court and to Donald J. Trump. We do not consent. Stop. <laughs> Trump doesn't care. The women and people of this state do not consent. And the women and people of this country certainly do not consent to Donald Trump. Right. So what's Trump going to do? I'm Donald Trump. Do you consent? No, never. Get away from my door, Trump. I just only want to vote. I don't consent. This is why. This is why they're doing everything they can to control the convention. Stuff like this. So you can see more propaganda pieces like this. Nor this corrupt court that he has enabled. And we are the front line of our democracy. We will have our day. We will write our story. And we will have the right to choose, not just with our bodies, but at the ballot box, too. And the only way that Republicans will get this message is when the people of this country decisively elect majorities in Congress, re-elect Jackie Rosen, and again, re-elect Joe Biden. <laughs> I knew you'd do it. I knew you'd do it. Re-elect Joe Biden. The guy who screwed up the economy. The guy who ruined our entire economic system. Yeah, yeah, Joe Biden. Yeah, Bidenomics. How's that working out for you? Under his administration, planes, trains, and automobiles and bridges are all falling apart. Under his administration, political corruption is running rampant. Under his administration, hey, those kids are still in cages. AOC, I remember you used to cry about that. Under his administration, we're in... Well, the ever dangerous area of World War Three, the sequel that no one wants. We got to reelect Joe Biden because ah, we don't consent. We don't consent to Trump. Trump, we don't consent to you. He doesn't care. Here, listen to that one more time. And the only way that Republicans will get this message is when the people of this country decisively elect majorities in Congress, re-elect Jackie Rosen, and again, re-elect Joe Biden. This is not a game, Las Vegas. Every single one of us has our story of choice, of looking at a crossroad and deciding how we want to proceed, whether it's contraception, IVF, 
abortion, family planning, or any or none of the above. These are our essential. Buds of Smoka, yeah, AOC should go to Hollywood. She should be part of the second season of The Acolyte. <laughs> we don't consent to Trump. The power of one, we don't consent to Trump. The power of two, we don't consent to Trump. The power of many, we don't consent to Trump. Freedom that unlock agency over our lives. And it is up to us to defend them, to restore them. Hey, Darren, thank you for the $5 tip. But leave, leave, leave my favorite baseball team alone. Come on, dude. That, now that's violence. That's that's vi this this is violence right here. Okay, just just stop it. Don't be mean. <laughs> where where did you learn this behavior from? <laughs> and to codify them as the law of this land. <laughs> they have given us no other choice but to win. Yeah. And speaking of winning, hey, here's here's how much of a fighter AOC is getting fake arrested. Never forget. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Got to mute for copyright, but hold on. There she is getting arrested. There's no handcuffs on you. AOC, I could break these cuffs. Yeah, she broke those cuffs. <laughs> if you know what I referenced, I love you. But yes, the Democrats are holding a convention. It's going to be lackluster. It's going to be mediocre. It's going to be controlled. It's going to be stale. And there will be more propaganda pieces like that of AOC if she does get reelected if she's allowed to speak at the convention of all of them saying we got to stop Trump because we have to support Biden because our democracy is at risk. <sighs> Democrats way to be inept way to show your hand. And, you know, I've been noticing I've, I've been driving by the United Center and yes, a little bit by the McCormick place, too. And. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should take some photos here and there just so all of you can see it. But they are trying to make that place. All these areas where the convention is going to be at look cat fancy and shiny. You know, it's hell. I probably might have to wake up really early in the morning just to uh, uh, get transportation there because parking might be an absolute nightmare. I, I could promise you that hard lens media, we will cover the convention. We are going to be there. Um, but it's going to be stale, it's going to be controlled, and it's going to be purposely designed in a way to make it seem, because perception drives reality, that everything's nice and there's nothing but peace and love. But you heard from the article that I read. The Democrats want to make sure that there are going to be no agitators, no protesters, no activists. They're going to make Joe Biden and the Democrats look bad. Hey, AOC, tell us again. Through your own inaction, through your own incompetence, and the squad included, and Bernie Sanders, why should anyone risk their hard-earned money, their credibility, and their dignity, sticking their necks out for a party that refuses to take criticism? I'm waiting for the answer. <laughs>